In this AI podcast summary of Diary of a CEO, neuroscientist Dr. Tara Swart and host Stephen Bartlett explore the power of the brain and its connection to physical health, stress, emotional regulation, and human interaction. Dr. Swart underscores the importance of maintaining physical health and reducing sedentary habits, as these factors contribute significantly to overall brain function and mental well-being. She emphasizes the importance of sleep, good nutrition, and managing stress, explaining that the brain cannot perform optimally when it is not given the best conditions to operate. The conversation turns to explore the concept of stress, its subjectivity, and its effects on the body, including the production of cortisol. Cortisol, a stress hormone, causes inflammation throughout the body and brain and can result in various health issues, including heart attacks. However, Dr. Swart explains that stress is subjective. It depends on the individual's interpretation of events. She suggests there is a difference between a healthy, adaptive response to a challenge which should be a temporary spike in cortisol levels, and chronic stress, where cortisol levels remain consistently high. Dr. Swart delves into the social contagion of stress, suggesting that stress can indeed be contagious, impacting those within our proximity. Cortisol, the stress hormone, can leak from our sweat and enter the skin of those around us, influencing their stress levels. Expanding further into social interactions, the conversation touches on ways to encourage the release of oxytocin, a hormone associated with social bonding. Dr. Swartz suggests that eye contact, touch, laughter and shared emotional experiences can boost this bonding hormone's release. Further, when men shake hands and place the other hand over the top, it creates a sense of warmth and trust, which could also enhance bonding. Interestingly, Dr. Swartz references a biological phenomena where women who live or work closely together can come to synchronize their menstrual cycles due to sex steroid hormones such as estrogen and progesterone being released through sweat. This interaction between hormones and physical proximity, a relic from humanity's nomadic past, demonstrates the significant impact invisible physiological forces can have on personal relationships and group dynamics. The discussion continues around the role of cortisol in our bodies. Dr. Swart conveys that besides stress, cortisol can leak into your surroundings, impacting those around you, and can also accumulate as fat in the abdomen, a survival mechanism originally designed to help us persevere during times of scarce food. Dr. Swart further explains how the impact of cortisol expands beyond individual health. Particularly in a workplace environment, a person's stress levels can affect those around them. This is especially the case for leaders whose stress levels can have a significant impact on the entire team, even if leaders attempt to hide their stress, say through masking their worries or emotions, it can still physiologically impact others around them. Physical exercise and journaling are recommended as two main strategies to combat stress and reduce cortisol levels. By engaging in aerobic exercise, you can literally sweat excess cortisol out of your body. Similarly, by writing out your thoughts, you can help get the cortisol-associated negative thoughts out of your system. Dr. Swart and Bartlett then shift their conversation to the significance of sleep for the brain and stress management. On average, the ideal amount of sleep is around 8 hours and 15 minutes, during which the brain gets a chance to cleanse itself from toxins. This cleaning happens through a glymphatic system, actively flushing out substances linked to diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Strikingly, Dr. Swart mentions that the ideal sleeping position for this cleansing process is on your side, facilitating the cleansing fluid's circulation. Furthermore, good sleep supports memory formation, new learning, emotional processing, and body cell regeneration. Finally, the conversation explores the benefits of co-sleeping or sleeping in close proximity to each other, which is associated with the release of the bonding hormone oxytocin. Dr. Swartz suggests that this bonding is critical not only for our emotional and spiritual survival, but also for the warmth and trust it fosters among those sharing the sleeping space. She concludes this portion of the discussion by indicating that any brief interruptions in sleep due to a partner waking up early, for instance, can even lead to a spike in resilience. Delving deeper into this fascinating conversation between Stephen Bartlett and Dr. Tara Swart, they broached the subject of resilience, emphasising its connection to both physical and psychological well-being. Contrary to popular belief, resilience isn't only about mental stamina, but also about the physiological resilience, as monitored by heart rate variability.
Dr. Swart highlights how this resilience can either be recouped during sleep or throughout the day in calm, positive environments. A noteworthy example cited is the physiological effect of after a good night's sleep, demonstrating a spike due to feeling loved, cherished and distress. Dr. Swart and Bartlett then diverge slightly into the role of intuition in decision-making. As per Dr. Swart, intuition results from the experiences and knowledge stored in our neural architecture, which we can't consciously recall. Not just limited to the brain, our intuition roots in our gut neurons as well, the basis of the term gut instinct. This realisation challenges the common belief that cognition, intelligence and memories are confined to the brain. The significance here lies in the interconnectedness of the brain and body with constant feedback flowing to and fro. One who realises this connection can preemptively predict, for example, the inception of a sickness. A clear inclination we see here is how women are more intuitive and in tune with such physical signs, while men would typically require more substantial scientific rationale. The conversation takes a sobering turn when Dr. Swart addresses the invisible crisis we are collectively facing due to the health anxiety, uncertainty, fear and loss we experienced during the pandemic. People of all ages and experiences are facing consequences of this crisis and we are failing to address them properly, focusing on immediate problems rather than taking long-term view. Dr. Swart observed that the pandemic could also usher a spiritual revolution. This stay-at-home phase allowed us to appreciate nature, realise our priorities and discover a deeper purpose in life. This newfound sense of purpose that transcends our immediate needs and desires has proven incredibly beneficial for mental health. This is a clear call for us to maintain these positive shifts, instead of merely reverting to our pre-pandemic self, concluding an intriguing section of this enlightening endeavour. As Bartlett and Swart continue their enlightening discussion, they explore the idea of having a purpose that transcends self-interest and self-satisfaction. Dr. Swart suggests that even small acts of kindness, such as helping an elderly neighbour, could serve this purpose. Giving of oneself without expecting a financial return or direct benefits can enhance our sense of life's worth. Bartlett proceeds to connect this idea with the concept of tribes and our primitive instincts. He speculates that serving others is a prehistoric desire to add value to our tribes. Dr. Swart counsels that returning to such cooperative acts of compassion can help us weather the challenges we face individually and collectively. The discussion then turns toward the emerging field of neuroaesthetics. Dr. Swart explains that regularly engaging in creative activities can significantly improve mental health, physical well-being and longevity. These creative activities could range from small daily encounters with beauty, smelling a lemon zest or appreciating nature's hues, to more focused endeavours such as painting or reading a novel. Both Bartlett and Swart agree that the ability to appreciate beauty is inherently tied to our sense of safety and well-being. However, in modern society, disconnection seems to be the norm. As Swart observes, loneliness is rampant as people are becoming more digitally connected but emotionally detached. Important elements of human interaction, such as empathy, are being routinely misplaced. This disconnection is further exacerbated by the portrayal of unrealistic body and relationship expectations through mediums like pornography. Swart maintains that it's important to build a tribe of constructive relationships with individuals who are psychologically aligned with us. This, she explains, is essential for neuroplasticity as it ensures the development of positive mental traits that fire and wire together in our brains. Conversations shift back to neuroplasticity, a term that defines the brain's ability to change and adapt throughout an individual's life. The duo discusses how a person can forge new neural pathways to break harmful habits like overthinking or procrastination. This kind of change requires intense and deliberate effort that induces neuroplasticity. The basic takeaway here is that by nurturing our brain, fostering constructive relationships and becoming spiritually awakened, we can use neuroplasticity to lead more meaningful and fulfilled lives. Our brain is an incredibly adaptable organ and with the right stimuli, it can transform for the better. In this expansive discussion, Bartlett and Dr. Swart engage deeper into neuroplasticity and its influential role in changing behaviours and habits. Dr. Swart lays out a three-step process that involves raising our awareness, focusing our attention and practising deliberately, all underpinned by neuroplasticity, to initiate positive change. She suggests that negative thinking, 
Lack of motivation or losing temper can all be addressed through this mindful practice, disrupting the unhelpful patterns that our brains are wired to follow. Taking the case of a friend who falls for married men, Dr. Swart proposes an introspective examination of underlying beliefs that support such decisions. She emphasizes the significance of not only recognizing telltale patterns, but also delving deeper to uncover the core beliefs fueling these patterns. The process encourages the individual to consciously remember the consequences of past actions and refrain from repeating them. The next phase of transformation comprises practicing deliberately. It requires creating a mental image of the new you and observing every scenario with this fresh perspective. It could be saying not to an unavailable man or replacing every negative thought with a positive one. While this deliberate practice might be challenging initially, the brain would eventually follow the newly carved pathway thanks to neuroplasticity. Dr. Swart also highlights the importance of accountability during this journey. Having an external source to hold you accountable when the process seems grueling can prevent you from giving up. Another poignant topic they discuss is intergenerational epigenetic trauma. Dr. Swart provides insights on how external events can alter the expression of one's genes, which is passed down to future generations. Certain stress responses seen in today's generation can be traced back to traumatic events experienced by their grandparents or great-grandparents. But though our family's history shapes us, we can tap into the power of neuroplasticity to build a better future. They close this segment by addressing grief, a complex emotion that shapes our brain. Dr. Swart emphasizes the need to experience the depth of grief fully as a crucial part of the healing process. Blotting out grief or living in denial only prolongs the pain. The process demands introspection, acceptance and gradual healing. Grief, much like other emotions, is a journey in self-discovery and growth, facilitated by our brain's ability to adapt and evolve. The conversation continues to delve deeper into the mechanisms of neuroplasticity, with Dr. Swart highlighting three key factors that influence significant changes in our brains. Myelination, synaptic connections, and neurogenesis. Myelination refers to the development of a fatty substance that coats some neural pathways, making them faster and more efficient. Synaptic connections represent the process of neurons in our brains connecting, thereby creating new pathways. Finally, neurogenesis, while less common in adult brains, involves the creation of new neurons in our brain. Continuing on this theme, the conversation uncovers a surprising link between physical exercise and our brain's capacity to retain new information. Aerobic exercise specifically appears to accelerate neurogenesis, enabling our brains to create new neural pathways more efficiently. Visualization also plays a critical role in the process of neuroplasticity. Interestingly, the mere act of visualizing a certain activity can stimulate the brain to create new neural pathways, almost as if the action itself were physically taking place. Moving forward, the conversation addresses the influence of diet on neurogenesis. Foods with darker pigments have higher levels of antioxidants, which are known to contribute to neurogenesis. Examples of such foods include dark chocolate, black beans and blueberries. Regular physical activity, adequate hydration, managing stress and maintaining a healthy diet form the foundation for neuron growth. Time-restricted eating and fasting present more advanced methods of supporting brain health. The use of affirmations comes under discussion towards the end of this piece, pointing to how continuously repeating certain phrases can trick our brains into believing them, thereby influencing our self-perception and self-esteem. This is essential as the language we use to talk to ourselves plays a crucial role in shaping our thought patterns and mental health. When it comes to building self-esteem, identifying recurring negative thoughts and counteracting them with positive affirmations can yield significant changes. Bartlett and Dr. Swart further delve into the concept of affirmations, picking apart the shallowness of common phrases and emphasizing the need to say things that have meaning and significance to oneself. A concept that resonates with both is the need to feel safe, which surmounts the need for external validation. This leads to a stimulating discussion on manifestation, an idea sometimes dismissed as too abstract. Dr. Duffum, Swart presents manifestation from a neurological perspective, wherein your brain, through your thoughts, beliefs and actions, becomes the source of attraction for what you desire. The crucial element in this process is to ensure these desires align with your efforts and actions in achieving them. 
Moving on, Dr. Swart introduces the concept of neurodiversity, wherein conditions such as ADHD, autism, and dyslexia are seen as divergent from the typical structure of the brain rather than as deficits. She suggests that whilst there's been an increase in diagnosis of such conditions, this is likely due to better diagnostic methods rather than an increase in prevalence. The conversation then touches on the concept of neurodivergence, which encompasses conditions like ADHD and autism. Along with improved diagnosis, the changing pace and structure of the world could be contributing to a perceived increase in their occurrence. Dr. Swartz suggests that the modern world may be driving a form of human evolution where neurodivergent states have an adaptive value. Bartlett raises the topic of relationships, leading to an insightful discussion about the importance of understanding oneself first before manifesting the perfect partner. Dr. Swartz advises listeners to list the qualities they want in a partner, but also asks that they ensure they themselves embody these qualities. This conversation leads to the realisation that life tends to reward you with relationships that match your values and self-worth. As the conversation continues, Dr. Swart reflects on the benefits of humming and chanting, citing how they aid in expressing creativity and calming the nervous system. Furthermore, she discusses the influence of a person's mindset on their physical ageing process. Overall, this portion of their conversation dives deep into issues of self-perception, manifestation, relationships and neurodiversity, providing valuable insights into how one's mind can powerfully shape their reality. This segment of the podcast features Stephen Bartlett and Dr. Tara Swart further examining the impact of words, personal beliefs and practices on our neurological behaviour and actions. Bartlett emphasizes on a curious story about how his optician predicted the necessity of reading glasses due to aging. However, Bartlett challenges the prediction and works on not altering his visual habits. Fascinatingly, in the following year, the optician observes an improvement in his sight. Here, both Bartlett and Dr. Swart underpin the subconscious power of not accepting imposed limitations. Delving into the power of words, Dr. Swart describes an interesting experiment conducted with young medical students in Florida. In the experiment, the students were presented with particular words associated with retirement, causing them to slow down their walking pace. This experiment highlights how words could instantly alter people's behaviour. Bartlett mentioned how his slight alteration in his language helped him shift from feeling disempowered to empowered. For instance, replacing the word need with treat myself gives him a sense of control and power, removing the perception of dependency. Dr. Swart then invites listeners to fully manifest their desires and give gratitude for them. The crucial step here is to visualize oneself already in possession or achievement of those desires. Particularly, she encourages listeners to spend at least five minutes daily sitting down, visualizing their goals and then expressing gratitude. In the case of the taxi driver, with dreams of starting his own business, Dr. Swart recommends him to decide clearly what he desires and express gratitude for having achieved it. This practice moves the brain from a fear state to a trust state, preparing the initial steps towards making constructive changes and moving closer to their dreams. Finally, Bartlett closes off the conversation by expressing how he has a clearer understanding of neuroplasticity and manifestation through the lens of science. The discussion has made him aware of the untapped potential in each individual and how they can utilise their brain power to step towards their aspirations. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.